Okay. What I expect from the LAC, that's the big problem. What I expect is the unexpected. If it gives me what the standard model predicts, flat out with a hex of a low mass, ah, it would be dull. I would I want something more exciting than that. Thank you. And we expect many things. We expect, of course, the standard model to be confirmed, the Higgs particle to be discovered, but much more importantly, we expect new discoveries that will uh, give us clues about the unification of the forces and uh, maybe will help us answer some of the many mysteries that the standard model leaves unanswered. I personally uh, expect supersymmetry to be discovered at the LHC. Uh, and that enormous discovery, if it happens, will open up a new world, the super world, will give the LHC enough to do for 20 years and will uh, help us uh, try to understand some of the deepest problems in the structure of matter and elementary particle physics and beyond. So we're all waiting and um, hoping and expecting and very nervous. <laughs> it's a very exciting period. Well, it's, it's an incredible piece of engineering. There's no, no question about that. Uh, 27 kilometers of, of superfluid helium is, is a, a mind-boggling thing. Uh, however, if you look at any little piece of that, of course, uh, I understand the physics of that very well. Uh, and uh, in fact, CERN utilizes the, some of the superfluid properties of helium-4 uh, because it's, it's a much better thermal conductor in the superfluid state than it is in the normal state. And, and of course, you need that because you're withdrawing heat from, from uh, these magnets and you don't want the magnets to quench. So it, I think it, it's uh, a simple technology carried to the absolute limit of what we can imagine that man would ever do. Uh, but of course, the, the most fascinating part of CERN is, isn't in, in the cryogenics, but, but in, in the particles that we hope uh, the LHC will, will produce. And uh, we unfortunately just have to hope that they're gonna come out. Because if we get the Higgs, I think that's expected. Uh, maybe if we don't get the Higgs, that would in fact be a bit more interesting. But, but I'm hoping that there will be lots of new particles, that there will be resonances that no one ever expected. And I think that will be exciting. I, well, one of the great things is the cosmology and energy physics are merging, that they begin to overlap and, and, and uh, complement each other and are necessary for each other. And, but for the LHC, I'm very excited for it to turn on because I have expectations, partly because of what I want, but partly because I think they're hints and that's that there will be extra dimensions revealed and I'm hoping the LHC will actually begin to unveil that and that'll have huge implications all across the board. There are quite a few mysteries in the domain that LHC is going to open in contrast perhaps with the earlier accelerators where we pretty well knew or had a good idea what, about what to expect. In the case of LHC, we're not sure what to expect. And there could be quite a, a number of different scenarios as to uh, what might come out. First thing that we want to see is the Higgs particle, uh, even though even that can come in quite different forms. There could be just a single Higgs particle as predicted by the standard model, or there could be several species of Higgs particles. And, uh, but actually, discovery of the Higgs particle will not be very easy and might take some time. Maybe in the in the intermediate time, other things will be discovered of equal importance. So most of my colleagues think of supersymmetry as a very likely scenario, but supersymmetry can also come in many different forms. It's very difficult to foresee exactly in what way supersymmetry will be uh, discovered. Probably a very special kind of particle will first, first we'll see evidence of that kind of particle. But there may be more kinds of particles, and as a theorist, of course, I want to get a, a clear picture of not only the particles that we'll discover, but also the way they interact. That holds for the Higgs, but even more so for supersymmetry particles, or totally different kinds of particles. 
And my real dream will be that LHC will come up with a set of particles that nobody has yet predicted and doesn't look any way like the particles that we all expect today. That would be the nicest of all possibilities. We would really have work to do to, um, uh, to figure out how to interpret those results. That's uh, what I really hope. But something in between all those possibilities will quite likely come out. The general attitude of physicists toward the real world is that it's made of particles. And that means that the way to understand more about the real world is to find what these particles are, what their properties are, and when they're uh, interacting with each other, what kind of structures do they build which accounts for our real world. And so we have atoms and molecules and crystals, and at the other end we have electrons, and nowadays we have neutrinos, and then we have quarks and all kinds of other things that are sometimes postulated long before they're discovered. The neutrino is a good example. The neutrino was invented by Pauli in order to save the law of conservation of momentum. And it was a long time before we found it was really there. So physicists have great faith in their laws to predict where to look for new things. And they've been very uh, successful. Of course, there'll be an end to that. But at the moment, the uh, general trend has been to build larger and larger particle accelerators because the scale of detail of fine grain that you can detect gets smaller and smaller as the energy of the uh, accelerator gets bigger and bigger. So when you want to know more and more about what's really inside of these elementary building blocks of every substance, you are obliged to build bigger and bigger accelerators. And it has never failed that you, yes, you find out more about the things you already knew, but the exciting part is you also find things that you didn't know. You didn't even know they existed. So the bread and butter is that you learn more about what you already knew, and that somehow justifies the investment. But there's always not so secret desire that you're going to find things that you didn't know. And so far, it's always happened when you go to larger and larger accelerators. I think it'll happen again. Imagine that would be such a huge application, 27 kilometer large. Uh, yeah, but uh, the, you know the helium three is uh, uh, to, to different um, for, from helium four. But uh, no, I d didn't uh, imagine that, uh, it's uh, 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 27 kilometers uh, long and uh, or the circumference, and, and I didn't. Uh, um, imagine uh, if the uh, uh, superconductivity con too uh, had uh, su such a giant application. As a physicist, do you have any expectations from the LHC that is going to start up very soon? I don't know. You know, it's, it's the, the uh, wonderful thing is is that. Uh, uh, that that was a uh, 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 unknown um, and a pioneering adventure. Okay, thank you. Okay. We can go to the other room.